Okay, what we're looking at is a Hewlett Packard 5381A, 80 megahertz frequency counter. This particular counter is an ex exemplary shape with a beautiful front panel with none of the discoloration that's normal on a great many of these units. And uh, the case has been repainted, refinished, it's beautiful, looks new. We had three new LEDs put into this unit so that it functions properly. Um, I can tell you that the, uh, the camera doesn't do us justice. It's uh, not sensitive to the infrared uh, that this unit puts out. I can tell you that to the naked eye, it's quite visible. Uh, a, good, uh, a good output looks even. The decimal point uh, is functioning properly. That's one of the things that wasn't working before in the millions place. Uh, we had a couple of missing digits, so we replaced those. And we've calibrated the unit uh, with a rubidium standard, which right now the, uh, the calibration on a 10 second average is showing us that we are as you can see our counter is reading within two tenths of the rubidium standard two tenths of a hertz this is on a 10 second average if we go to one second we should be within one digit on the right hand side and if we go to a tenth of a second we'll get the the full 10 megahertz reading, 10.00000, uh, with one count flashing on and off. That one count is a pretty standard uh, error. But as you uh, increase the gate time, you're shifting your decimals. Uh, the decimal place will go was off to the left, and you'll you get more of the decimal places to the right. So let's go ahead and take this thing through its paces again. I uh, now that I have changed another one of the uh, digits for the decimal place. Okay, we are uh, at the moment inputting 80 megahertz from this um, PTS 500. I just turned the PTS on. It's a little cold. But we are getting 80, 80 plus megahertz on the reading here. And if I go 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're reading 99 megahertz without a problem. This would be 100. But the 1 is shifted off to the left. And we are reading it quite well. Let's see if we can go 101, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah. So we got to 4. At 5 we dropped out. So we're good up to about 105 megahertz. I wouldn't normally advise you to run it that way. I'd say you'd be safe up to 99. We're rated at 80. Let's go ahead and look at 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and then we go 9, 8, oops, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we're out of the range of the PTS, and we'll have to switch to the Hewlett Packard 3320. So bear with me and we'll hook it up. Here's one. There's 900, 800, 700, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's 90. We're going to go ahead and turn our time base down a little. There's uh, 
sorry, there's 9 kilohertz. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. 900, 800, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300, 200, 100. Okay. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 10, 9, 8, 6, 5, we need to go turn our time base up to 10 seconds. Four, three, give it one more go around. There's three, two, in a second here. It's 2.3. One more cycle. We'll get it. 2.1. There we go. 1. Let's see if we can hit 1. Ooh. Don't think we're going to get 1. down to 2 hertz. Put her back up at 2. Let's see if we get her back again. There she comes. One more cycle. Okay, so the low end on this unit is uh, currently 2 hertz. And the high end we read 100 megahertz without a problem. So. The unit is functioning very well. It's in really beautiful shape. Um, whoever gets it, uh, good luck to you. Oh, I know I did say I was going to check the uh, calibration again. Let's do that. Okay, we're connected up to the rubidium again, and the unit has warmed up while we were running tests. And as we can see right now, we're reading 9,999,998 or 9. So, a tenth of a hertz. We are a tenth of a hertz off. And as usual, we'll provide a, a brand new set of coax to gator clip leads, which is my favorite general purpose lead. And then we have the manual, operating and service manual for this counter contains the theory, the calibration, repair, service documentation, schematics, parts lists, everything. So, you'll be in good shape. Happy bidding.